Stan isn't here. Marshall's got an opportunity. Marshall can sing without getting in trouble. No one is going to interrupt Marshall. Yeah. If you could sing at the top of your lungs, what would you sing? Martha, my dear, though I spend my days in contemplation. Oh dear, it all ends. Yeah. Any good prompt? Yeah, there was a good one in there. You want to try one? Let me oh, okay, Marshall. fine. Marshall, come here. And face the draftsman sign. <laughs> okay, I'm going to guide you through this. Okay, the prompt is stand up and look between your legs. <laughs> no, like between your legs. Oh, you mean put, get my head all the way down? Yeah, look, look be, yeah, look between your legs. Is it okay to go like that? Yeah. For two minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marshmallow, how you doing, man? Very well. <laughs> You should have called me some kind of I was like. Trying to, but Stanislav was the best I could do of. Stan. You literally called me by my name. Stan. Uh, Stand up. So Stanislav, Stan. Standard. Just call him Stanky Panky. Stanky Panky. You call him Stanky Panky. No, he <laughs> doesn't. Mm. Uh, mm, what? Did you just yeah. epiphany? It's our last draftsman episode. Finally. Wow. I'm just kidding. It is our last episode. Yeah. And I don't know how to feel. Really? Well, I don't you, know if you I concentrate. Should... Concentrate. Yeah. And zero in on okay. your feelings. Yes. Picture and that's yourself how, in a canoe. That's how you. That's how you feel. Picture myself in a canoe. Mm hmm. Let me see. How do I feel? Stan is searching. There's some nervous energy. Internally. There's some nervous energy. Yeah. Flowing. Is there really? Yeah. Of course. Mm. Because it's like, this is the last one. Yeah. It has to be good. Oh man, it's got to be good. It's got to be the best one. If it isn't, <laughs> we're gonna just be, feel <laughs> crushed. We're talking about unrealistic expectations. Yes, we were. It's got to knock every this is a other blocker. one out. I'm this identifying. Is the ultimate. Ah. The. It's truly the ultimate. What? It's the ultimate episode. Last episode was the pen ultimate episode. This is the ultimate episode. In more than one sense of the word. Oh. Okay, now wow. you tell me your feelings. But that wasn't a feeling. Oh, no, that was a, a, it was an observation. It came out of feeling. Uh, what is this episode about? Remind me. So, last week we talked about all the blockers of creativity mm -hmm. all the things that are preventing you from being creative mm -hmm. and we did actually surprisingly a good job of not giving the solutions this week or today yeah we're not gonna spend a whole week on this hope not <laughs> we're gonna narrow down right here to an hour uh we're going to give the solutions so we're gonna go back through all the problems again mm -hmm. okay well i've got one thing that i want to throw in right at the beginning yeah. This is not from me. Uh, it's from Kirsten Zerngibble, who is one of the most creative people I know. Ooh, and really? she has an attitude about this term creativity and creative okay. that we should replace it with a better word. Why? That creates fewer idealistic expectations. It's Ooh. ideating. You think the word creativity is... Uh, sh what's the word? It promises no, a lot. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I need to remember the word. I like it when Stan does it. No, no, <laughs> I need to remember the word. It shows you're alive. It's, it's, um, God damn it. When, when something is something, something. I, I'm something. with you. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for I'm not, you. I'm, I, <laughs> what have we here? It's, I'm rooting it's, for it's, you. it's a very easy word. This is not, it's, it's intimidating. Intimidating. It's, so, the word creativity is intimidating to people. It's something that they think they don't have and they, they can't achieve. Is that what I'm thinking was that ideating does not promise success. And ideating is a technique. It doesn't. And ideation is creating ideas? Generating ideas to be considered. 
generating ideas that can take you in directions you might not have expected, generating ideas that may be genuinely creative. Okay. So there's a difference there, right? Yeah. So creating ideas does not necessarily have to solve problems, right? Creativity is using your imagination to solve problems. Am I'm I... not prepared to, to really analyze these definitions, but I do like what she said. Okay. Ideation is a technique, it's a method of enhancing creativity. It's an okay. essential one. Okay. I don't want to replace the word. I don't want to replace it either, but I wanted to at least throw that in because I think that what when she explained it to me, which she did much more briefly than what we're doing here, I thought I <laughs> like the idea of replacing the term or at least making the caveat at the beginning. We're learning to generate ideas, many and varied, hopefully our best. Okay. Along the lines of creativity being something that people think they don't have. Mm -hmm. Larry Moore, which is the book that I, that I read recently. What's the name of the book? Fishing for Elephants, Insights and Exercises to Inspire Authentic Creativity. He says that, yeah, anyone can be creative. You just need to follow a few steps. You need to understand how creativity works. And you need to allow yourself to play and explore. And you have to be fearless. So, those, he, he kind of says these are like the little ingredients. You can be creative. Mm -hmm. David D. Edwards boils it down to two requirements for creativity. One oh. is an understanding of creativity. Okay, understanding so understand how, how creativity that's, that's, works. Yeah. So, that was one. And then the second one is a desire to do it. Marshall, what's the name of that book again? That is David D. Edwards, How to Be More Creative, 1979, typewritten. The shortest book on creativity I know. That's a good way of combining his second two. Yeah, a I desire so to do it is like allowing yourself to play and explore and being fearless. Here's what it really comes down to. In the last 10 years, I have written this down more than once to remind myself of what I learned Dang. teaching in colleges. You cannot teach creativity. You cannot teach it because some students are so locked into some of those blocks and proud of those blocks that they will be creative in avoiding mastering creativity. It takes... Now, hang on. I feel like that's the opposite of what Larry's saying. But when I say teach it, you can create an environment for it. You can coach it You though, can right? coach it. You can be a consultant for it mm -hmm. and you can prompt it and encourage it, but you cannot teach a person to be a creative if they do not desire to or if their greater desire is to resist instruction. And I've seen that happen enough. But you can coach the desire into them. No, 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 no. Coach the desire into them? I think not. It may be that some people can if they've got some the people desire. Some be able to. Some people some are people inspired. Can. I mean... Insp yeah. Being someone who inspires creates the desire yeah. in someone else. So, well, I think it's possible. Yeah, I'm sure it is possible for some people with that gift, but I have the desire to not coach <laughs> people's desire. Okay, so you yeah. cannot. I cannot because I have no desire <laughs> okay. to coach those who don't desire. Yeah, I also there is There's such a joy in someone who really wants it versus somebody that you're going to be pulling the mule to mm -hmm. say, you know, there's water over there. You could get it. Yeah, but you want me to go there. So, the desire to enhance our creativity is the second requirement that David D. Edwards gives. Understanding something about how it works and really wanting to do it. You got those two things and then you've got the magic okay. combination. Okay. And if you don't, should we just tell them to get out of here? Uh, yeah, unless you can like, is there anything else you could do? Is there any alternative? You want to brainstorm ideas of what you could do with them? Go away? Like yeah. Yeah, chastise This them. is not for you. Put a picture of them in the gallery of people who did not want to be creative. Yeah, send us your photo. Stop listening. We don't want you here. No, Stan might be the kind of guy who's got a gift to see that <laughs> little tiny glowing ember of desire in you. Oh, you know and, me well. And, yeah. You've got a lot of empathy with the, the struggling student and I want to see it. Blossom, go. Get the f out. Oh, man. <laughs> this, this started out so hopeful. <laughs> no, come back. We need the views. All right. I, I we need the views and the likes. Oh, yeah. It's all about, all about the views and the likes. Okay. And the TikToks. Uh, no. Don't forget the TikToks, Marshall. Never forget the TikToks. I'm not forgetting. Those are the most 
valuable social points. They today. are in the forefront of my mind. <laughs> now, <laughs> Every night before I go to bed, I think of the TikToks. I gave the solution to one of the emotional blocks last week. The block is fear. And the advice was feel the fear, but do it anyway. And that, and he also suggested write down the fears because when you write them down and put them in front of your face, you've objectified them and you can say, I'll face them on paper and then I'll eventually get the strength to face them in life. I also provided one of the solutions to fear, which was to use that energy towards proactive change. Mm -hmm. Like um, he says, problem solving is greater than problem worrying. Ooh. We both got problems. You worry about yours. I work on solving mine. Yeah. There you go. One of the biggest things he he lists here as a blocker that is in the fear category is performance anxiety, right? Yeah. I mean, when you fear something, you, it hinders your performance. Yes. So, he has a bunch of tips on overcoming that. I'll okay. just list them out. Take things in small steps, right? Less threatening that way. Yes. One thing at a time. Don't try to solve all the problems at once. Just narrow in on one little thing, try to do it. It's chunky. Yeah. Keep it simple. So, instead of trying to do the big painting, starting from, you know, blank canvas, make it small, do a little study. Get three thumbnails done. Yeah. Yeah. Practice fundamentals one at a time. Do some throwaways. Mmm. The give yourself that, permission for it to fail. Expect just, to fail. Just do yeah. something where like you you know you're going to fail, but just do it anyway. Yeah. Good. Set deadlines. It's interesting. Right? Well, this is for performance anxiety. How how that's it would make me think that it it could it, the opposite to, would happen. Maybe. It, maybe in some people it would. Oh. Some people when you have the pressure to do it in a certain amount of time, you just like get to work. But if you have too much time, you're scared and you just kind of keep procrastinating. Mhm. Mm Right? Because yes. performance anxiety can lead to procrastination. Right. But then as the closer you get to the deadline, the more likely you are to actually begin it. Yes. Right? So, you could, s the deadline does help. It does. That's why putting that one minute limit on this drawing means I've got to get the whole thing done and mm -hmm. you can't, you have no time to be self-conscious about it. Yeah, exactly. It. And yeah. you might fail, which is totally fine. That's the, the goal is not to succeed, is to start moving. The goal is to overcome the performance anxiety. Right. Can succeed later. Try a different medium. Good. Or like a different instrument mm -hmm. or a different whatever. Uh, draw from memory and don't judge. Mm. So it's just kind of like, it's like a throwaway again if you're not good at drawing from memory. If you're Kim Jong-gi, this, this probably won't help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make collages. Get those glue sticks out. <laughs> good. These are good. good. Yeah. Are, are I'm more? done with that. Oh, that's it. Okay. You want to lead to the next thing? What's the next one? What's the next emotional block that we're going to solve? People came here saying, look, I paid my money. You told me we were going to solve my emotional blocks, my cultural and perceptual blocks. Let, let's go to our natural inclination to conform yeah. to society, to a tribe, to a whatever, yeah. to fit in. Prevents you from being truly creative because you, you're, you're limiting yourself to what people or systems point you to as like, there is a solution. And being different, you don't fit in and you could be embarrassed or you can be kicked out or you could be harassed or stoned. I don't know. You could, you well, could indeed, be. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that does has, happen. That happened. Not but, as much anymore, but right. it did. His taking some of these and putting them into the cultural context, cultural blocks, uh, is dangerous for a person like me because I just have so little interest in, in mainstream culture that it confirms my own biases. This might have just been my own phrase. The more we're like everybody else, the less likely we are to offer anything unique. If we go limp and just let the culture form us, it's like being a jellyfish. You can, some beautiful things can come out of it, but you're not riding the wave where you've got to get up onto the wave. Uh, you're certainly not running or flying where you're taking charge of your own journey. So, I think that cultural blocks are really big. If you say, I do want to be unique, how would I overcome the cultural block of conforming? He mentions, start by identifying all of these things that you know are limiting you, cultural and societal and family dynamics and 
church or whatever, all of these things that are limiting you. Mm -hmm. And by knowing them, you're more likely to find ways to prevent them from limiting you mm -hmm. to being creative. Do you have examples in your life where you could feel you were being culturally blocked and that you had to get past it? I feel like there's there's a lot of little ones, right? It's it's everywhere. It's, it's kind of hard to point to with one and be like, oh man, that's a huge one right there. But it, it, it really is everywhere in just small ways. Like because I had in, in elementary school a, a teacher that didn't really teach history in a way that made it fun for me, I never really liked history. I never enjoyed it. Thus, I never pursued learning art history and that is preventing me from knowing more about art and exploring you know you know what i mean like I there, there's there's one that's not horrible like i still i explored other things and whatever but, but you're, that, that was where your local culture of a teacher yeah, right. affected you negatively yeah oh you're making me feel appreciation for mr steenback yeah, I, I didn't have mr steenback yeah when i was 12 years old he was a history teacher who made it so interesting and i have not really given him credit yeah. For what he did. He ignited an interest in you what was going on back then. Okay. Keep don't going. realize how good you have it. Until it's gone. Gone or <laughs> set up against someone who didn't. <laughs> yeah. I would categorize that some of them are very small cultural things like my yeah. family or my friends that I hang out with. And I've already told about how when I was 19, it took me a while, but I had to divorce my high school friends. And how difficult that was because I knew that if I do what they want to do mm -hmm. every Friday, Saturday night, yeah. every it, it's going to be partying, I'll never be creative. And so, I had to leave them. That was a, a minor one. Mm -hmm. There was a bigger cultural one that happened by the time I was in my 20s, mid-20s, is that I saw that TV dominates everybody's life and things was before the internet, of course, but everything was centered around TV. And I read this book that a, a guy I worked for told me to read. It was called Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television by Jerry Mander. And he admits- <laughs> Like Jerry Mander. Yeah. yeah <laughs> he, he was like, I think he was an ad executive or something that dropped me? out of it. I'll give one quick example. All through human history, our rituals and patterns and celebrations were related to natural phenomena. The way the sun goes in and the way the cycles of the seasons go. And then when television comes in, rapidly, in a matter of a decade, everybody adjusts their schedule to TV. They even all go to the bathroom at the same time when the commercials come on. And that was an interesting phenomenon for me to think about. And I read that book and thought about it and I decided uh, I'm taking TV out of my life and I never brought it back in and I do not regret it. Now, all of this is to say that I could not let the culture affect my thinking every day and I bowed out of it and I'm really glad I did that. That was mm -hmm. something I have no regrets about at all. I'd rather read and be around people who are going to sharpen me rather than make me feel like I feel after. Okay, keep going. I mean, there could be like little family things where, you know, my family is very like focused on more logical science like both of my parents are scientists, mm -hmm. my brother, biology and law, right? Like very much just in the family that was like pointed to that kind of thing. Naturally, I gravitate to more technical stuff. Mm -hmm. So, even just the way I draw and, and paint is, is focused on the technique uh, rather than exploring more creative Ideating. things. Yeah. Ideating. You, but you, but you, now, you, you now you're it. putting a label on it. You're, you're recognizing it so that mm -hmm. you can say, if I want to go the other direction, then I know that I, I care to move, to steer elsewhere. Yeah. Larry says, your beliefs are yours mm -hmm. to keep or discard. It's good. It's yeah. the growth mindset. But yeah, but first, you have to identify these things. You have to really just spend time identifying all, all these, and not all, just a bunch that you can think of and make a list and, and ponder on it for a while. That makes me think of another little one, but it is definitely cultural. My new friends that I made during college, we would work all through the night, which was counter-cultural, but we were productive and that helped me make money too because I would work through the night and the art director would get it in the morning and they liked that. It was 
it was going against the way you normally work, but it worked very well for me. Also, my energy just goes up at night. Mm. So you're talking about all the all the good things about you. <laughs> well, if we Thought if we, we really to... want to zero in on the failures, <laughs> I've mentioned some of them. Well, things even... prevent that pre ended up preventing like um, mm -hmm. cultural blockers. Right? But which anyway, ones are you, which you ones are them? still hampering my creativity? Is that what you're seeking? Maybe not. Whatever. I know one, but yeah. It was one that you mentioned in one of our episodes. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Bring it back to me. Being the jerk. No, it was when we were talking about you were working with some programmers or some people that you were uh, uh -huh. working on a project and how when you're in the initial stages, don't stop and finesse and get the details of that. Uh -huh. Move on to get the big picture. I still struggle with that. I've named it for two or three decades now named it, but I still find my inclination is as soon as I find the tiniest part of this big brainstorming session that I like, mm. I want to run going it. on that path. Yeah, now you've you missed. Go deep. You're in the forest and you've already started to build your house and you haven't even gotten a lay of the land of the forest yet. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is related to like the blue sky stage of brainstorming anything, right? Mm -hmm. Where anything goes. The right thing to do in that stage is to not judge any one solution, any idea, especially if you're doing this in a group. If somebody brings up an idea, you don't say this, no, that's bad. You, you know, you, you let everybody be safe in coming up with any bad idea because those bad ideas lead to good ideas. Exactly. So, the, if there's any rule for brainstorming, it is not to judge Mm -hmm. But to do the opposite of judge, it's the somebody just brought up the stupidest idea. Let's run with that and yeah. see if we can plus it and where it could lead. And that way you're generating the wildness that is necessary in the early stages. It's not just embracing the chaos, it's contributing to the chaos. Mm -hmm. Which is tough to do. Uh, it's something that's really important to remember for leaders in a group mm -hmm. because the leaders their job is to is to make sure that there's a solution eventually mm -hmm. and you want to get there as quick as possible and so when somebody's coming up with ideas you want to tear down the bad ones right away so you don't waste time on the bad ones yeah. like no no no, that won't work because of this this and this but that's not let's keep going yeah right but it's but you don't do that yeah you you let in the initial stage you let everything be be game this is fine and then you find the best idea. That's guardian energy that's trying to protect from a bad idea, mm -hmm. but it will also protect from a good idea. <laughs> right. Yeah. New, yes. right. Let the guardians come in later when there's higher stakes. What's the worst that can happen? We came up with 40 really stupid ideas. Did you have fun? Kind of had fun. Yeah, laughed a lot. None of them are usable, but yeah. Yeah, what are the stakes? That's the great there, this is something I also learned about the solutions to these blocks is that the ideation stage, the brainstorming stage mm -hmm. should be ideally separated, at least in training, but even all the way into the stages of professionals who do this for a living, that you have a stage of that and a break, a walk, a meal, a night of sleep, and then come back to it with the different energy, the protective energy. Sometimes people get the idea that protective energy is bad in creativity. Protective energy is, has tremendous value in creativity, but it must be in the later stages, not in the initial stages. Mm -hmm. That yeah. thing about Dionysian energy and Ap Apollonian energy, you remember we talked about that? I said that I divide all art training into Dionysian and Apollonian. You said, I haven't heard this before. I haven't heard this before. I explained this to you. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, you hadn't heard me talk about it much <laughs> because I found better words for it than those. Those are Greek gods. The better energy is kid. What's better than God? Explain. Greek gods. Mm -hmm. They are not that? the monotheistic god of Judaism. They are the gods that compete against each other. Now, let's keep on the track, <laughs> kid. Send the trap. Send a little trap. I, <laughs> I think the best one is because it's universally observable that kids are wild and uninhibited mm -hmm. and they take chances that the, the grown-ups are trying to protect from, but to tap into kid energy and grown-up energy and put them in their places, 
That's a wonderful division. That's my main one for those two parts of the process. Yeah. Well, this is that's one that we actually did ex- offer a solution as well last time. Yeah, we did. The, the kids spanking the grown-up. Carl Jung says, the dynamic principle of fantasy is play, which belongs also to the child and appears to be inconsistent with the principle of serious work, but without this playing with fantasy, no creative work has ever yet come to birth. That's the first half. Mm -hmm. The second half is that, remember, that children are savages and they do crazy things Mm. and they put keys into the electrical socket. I did that when I was a small child. I have a vivid recollection. Yeah. Of, of it. And so there has to be someone there who says, no, we don't play that way. On, on the lines of judging, mm-hmm. there's subjective and objective judging. So once you do, after you're done with the blue sky mm-hmm. and you are picking solutions. Mm-hmm. Grown up mode now. A little bit. Yeah. You have to now make sure you're judging ideas objectively. Sometimes subjectively is fine. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise, you don't have a voice, right? You have to have opinions when you're creating art. Yes, but you moved in. You have moved into a more critical phase, right? Yeah, there, there's some things that require you to be more objective. What's the best solution? And some things where it's like, okay, this just what's your style? And you have to know when to to wear the glasses, which glasses. Yeah, he, so he has four questions that you can ask to see if your opinions on things are objective or subjective. Let's hear. Are your assumptions correct? That's something that can be tested. Yes. Is what you're feeling or doing effective? Okay. Yeah. Does it work? Yes, does it work? Okay. Is information that you based your opinion on valid and factual? I think that's the same thing. Is your intent thoughtfully informed? I guess those are all the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> they are. The, the first or opinion. The first book I read on creativity in my 20s was called Creativity Road to Self-Discovery. And he talked about preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. And it made a lot of sense to me. Preparation is you get everything ready, you do the work, you do the brainstorming, all that stuff, but then you take time off and incubate. Mm-hmm. And then when the idea pops into your head, if it does, then you verify. And it just showed me that there are these different stages and most of what he was talking about there was verification, right? Yes. I think I I agree. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's another quote I like I want to say here. I mean, it's basically on, you know, don't judge other ways of doing things because your way is not the only or best way. Mm -hmm. He kind of pushes towards thing, just the general viewpoint of ways of doing things are all equal there, there, there's no better or worse or at least you shouldn't think that way not to start sure because you want to be you want to look at it all and give it a chance there, i mean it depends on for what it's not like an abstract way of of drawing a fish is worse than a representational way or in a car- cartoony way or with a 3d program or with, like these are all ways of showing a fish Mm -hmm. right? Are any of those better? It's very easy to think that your opinion or your preference of something is a better way of doing something. I'll just finish the quote. Judgment is putting yourself above another's another's way. Yeah. Comparison Mm -hmm. is putting yourself beneath the same. Comparison? But comparison is on a level for you. Kind of. He puts it on where you, when you compare yourself to oh, something yeah. else. Yeah, that's technically that would be contrast, but I've got you. <laughs> They're good and I'm not. They're better yeah. than I am. Look how bad I am. Yeah. yeah. Negative side effects of judging or comparing can either make it so that you're, t- you're better than something or you're worse than something. David D. Edwards says, step three for the solutions is suspend your judgment for a while. Don't say that's a good idea, but dot 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 too quickly give it a little time just in case this baby is no good Mm -hmm. it cries it's it's uh (laughs) you gotta you gotta wait before you make your judgment good something wrong with it it's busted (laughs) 
The volume's not working. Did I ever tell you the story you of when singing? I took part? <laughs> that, that sounded like the it's, beginning of. It's a, did I ever, did did you I ever, ever know tell you that you're my, my hero? It sounded like you're singing. I didn't. I didn't intend <laughs> I, I heard it. Well, yeah. I think we need to make it into a song. Yeah. Can you say the next sentence in the song? No. Okay. No, I want to make a point. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about the student who in the creative writing class in community college where I learned nothing was the best writer in the class? And when I asked him, how do you do it? What he told me? No. He said, it's all stream of consciousness to start. He said, what stream? He said, you don't know about stream of consciousness? I said, no. He said, you start out by just writing. That's the only rule. You can't stop. So I'm sitting here writing and I'm supposed to be doing a story for my writing class, but I don't know what to put in here. This reminds me of when I was in Mrs. Willard's class in fourth grade and and you just keep going and then you've got material. Yeah. Okay. So that's similar to, that's kind of like a solution to a blank page. Yeah. It's kind of. Just start. It's like if the blank page is too much for you and it you can't start, then... You allow yourself to just do something bad, do something that leads to something else. Yeah. The stream of consciousness might not be anything useful, but it could lead to something useful. Another thing is do something completely different and, and let your subconscious figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like step away from it and it'll, the solution will come to you when you're in the shower or driving or something. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? That is something, that is my main technique that I've learned. Wow. Which is, here's what it is. It's that instead of trying to solve the problem, just look at the problem. Instead of trying to write right now, just look at what it is you're trying to write. Mm -hmm. And you could even make a rule, you don't, you don't have a chance to write right now because you got to go for a walk. So, I get my head around it. It might take me 10 minutes, it might be a half hour, but even if it's 10 minutes, I have now given myself a problem that bugs me. So, when I'm on my walk, I will solve it. That happens, it, it's all about the calendar though. It is all about introducing the problem before you are not going to have a conversation with somebody about something else. If uh, familiarize myself with the problem before I have some time to let it pop into my head. That's, that's a, a really good one that I've landed on. I feel like one thing that you really do need to do for that to work though mm -hmm. is to fully define the problem. Well, Make you, sure that you understand what the whole problem is. Yes. And then your brain, your subconscious will be more likely to figure it out. But sometimes fully defining the problem is the problem. What? It's, in other words, I'm looking at this and uh -huh. it's, it's not really the problem, but it's the only thing I know. But there's something missing here. I'm missing something. Okay, I've got my head around what I got and I'm not sure what I don't got. I go for a walk and I thought, oh, that's what's missing. It mm. is the rhythm of tension and relaxation and out of the relaxation, you awaken with the dream you had that, that took care of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I have heard of, I've mentioned this even when you did that little interview at the Comic-Con about the guy who went for mountain biking when he was like, how do you solve all these problems? He was one of the most creative photographers working in the industry and this was when digital was new and he was doing all sorts of things with the new tools and they were so hard to learn and I was calling him all the time, it was before the internet. And saying, how do you do this? How do you do that? And he'd tell me these brilliant solutions. And I said, Gary, how do you do this? How do you know all of this stuff? And he said, tell you the truth, Marshall, every time I run into a problem and it's starting to bug me, I just get on my mountain bike and I ride a bit. And then when I come, he said, nine times out of 10, I've come back and I've got the solution. So that is the rhythm of tension that gets into you and then your subconscious mind resolves it. And it doesn't always work. But it works most of the time in my experience. Okay. What else? There's, well, one of the cultural things is time, right? Like saying I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I, and I already defined the kids one about time I have kids. Remember that? That was last. Damn, we really did, we really did talk a lot about the solutions last week. <laughs> As I'm looking at these again, I'm like, damn, we already talked about that. So, the big solution to the cultural stuff is be willing to be countercultural or find a new culture. Somebody yeah, said- start your own tribe. Yes. I use the example of cultural mainstream 
and that if you are swimming against the current of the mainstream, you have to work so hard that you end up exhausted. So you either give up and follow the cultural mainstream or you get into another stream that's going in the direction that you want to go that will be a smaller stream mm-hmm. but it will be a better one that takes you. So if you're, if you're going limp, if you're getting tired, you've got others that will carry you along. Yeah. He did talk about how you got to have a little bit of ego to do something like that, mm-hmm. to go against what is normal, against cultural norms, to dance to your own beat. Mm-hmm. You have to have enough ego, confidence to just say, no, I'm going to do it like this. Yes. He talked about how there's bad ego and good ego, obviously. I think that too. Ooh, daydreaming. Daydreaming. He talks about daydreaming. Good. So, this was one example of how everyone actually is creative because everybody daydreams Mm -hmm. and that is your brain just naturally doing it. Yeah. Um, And so, you have to allow yourself to daydream give yourself time during the day to be bored and and daydream because that's when your brain is taking a dump. (laughs) Well, that's one analogy. (laughs) (laughs) Daydreaming is an analogy, right? It's a metaphor. You're not really dreaming and you're during the day, but it's it's enough like dreaming and it's it's not steering it. Hmm. You're not necessarily telling it where to go. You're letting it play out in front of you. Yeah. Well, when you daydream, do you even, are you even conscious of the fact that you're daydreaming? Well, you can become conscious of the fact that you're daydreaming. As soon as I do, I stop daydreaming though. Okay. Yeah. It kind of wakes me up. You point to it and it disappears. Yes. Daydreaming is your brain dealing with problems, right? Kind of. It could, it could Could be. be, Yeah. It could. And so, sometimes when it, when it's doing that, that's kind of nice. When people ask writers, where do you get your ideas? Mm-hmm. Neil Gaiman was at the American Booksellers uh, Convention. It was there, They did it in LA and he had just finished a children's book, The Wolves in the Wall. And there was a big crowd of adoring fans there. And somebody asked, you know, open up for questions. The first question is a teenager saying, how do you get your ideas? And he respectfully answered it briefly. He said, daydreaming. It's just daydreaming. I'd like to tell you that it's more that I get these old bones and do these ritual stuff, but it's really just lets his mind wander and then documents. And incidentally, if that is his primary metaphor for it, his work has a daydreamy quality, has a dreamlike quality. In fact, he's most famous for those Sandman uh, graphic novels. The the choices of how you let your mind wander, free association, one-upping, there's all sorts of ways that you can say, here's how I play. But daydreaming is one. It's where I'm going to go into a passive mode and just let my imagination gently say, I'd like to go here, like to go here, see what happens. Have you noticed any patterns of when times in your, in your week, in your month, in your life, whatever, when you daydream more? Mm -hmm. Have you? Like Mm -hmm. what sparks daydreaming? What you mentioned time where you do not have another thing that is allotted that is Mm -hmm. goal-oriented. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say that same thing. I I tend to daydream way, way more during the weekend Mm -hmm. because I'm not busy focusing my brain on a specific task Mm -hmm. that is on my task list and in my calendar. Mm -hmm. It's like the weekend is- valuable stuff come out of it? The most valuable stuff. The most valuable stuff, yeah. Yeah. I feel that way too when I say I don't have to do anything right now. I'm not going to work for the next hour. But it's not like I'm not doing anything. I am doing something but it's not like intense brain work. It's more just like I'm I'm driving to Disneyland with my family and we're we're all just kind of like listening to music in the car. Yes. And you know, we got an hour and a half of not really much stuff. I mean, my, I'll be talking to Melissa for 20 minutes but it'll be like 10 minutes of nothing. We, we both just kind of start drifting off into our own daydream, right? Right. That just naturally happens on road trips or just any drive. It, our brain gets bored and we... It's, it's driving. Taking showers is another f- uh, famous one. Uh, being in the bathtub is another famous one. Walking is another famous one. Hmm. Uh, when the weather is right, 
starting a fire and having no, I do always keep paper around me and I've got my smartphone close enough to where I can dictate if I mm -hmm. want to dictate. But if I decide I'm just going to look at the fire for the two or three hours that that Costco log is supposed to burn, I cannot go the whole time and just look. I've tried and I've, I've even succeeded, but usually ideas start popping up because I get into a meditative state mm -hmm. of looking at the fire. Same way kind of thing by looking at a fountain or anything else. Anything where it's not goal oriented, ideas are going to start popping in and if, we're, if we have planted the seed of tension of things we want to solve, that's the thing that tends to take. There was one recently. I'm working on a an IP, like a superhero collection thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, me and me and Scott Flanders, we're, we're trying to like develop a bunch of superheroes. Mm -hmm. And I was, I'm trying to come up with a name of this group of superheroes. And I spent probably two weeks actually dedicating time, not two full weeks, but there were like time slots where I was like, okay, I, I got to spend 10 minutes like brainstorming some ideas. And I had a bunch, I made giant lists, none of them were good, but I planted that seed and then there was a weekend where having a picnic with my, with my wife and kids and I was just, I just, I was just lying down in the grass doing nothing. I thought I was just tired and relaxing but my brain started wandering and then Cooper had, Cooper always says, his vocabulary obviously is, is, is pretty small so he'll use the word very to describe something as big or important or whatever it is. He'll be like, you know, there'll be a car driving by and it's really big. He'll be like, that's very car, <laughs> right? It, or it's just impressive in some way. It, when it doesn't even make sense, that's very car. What, what is that? <laughs> like <laughs> like it, it's some kind of impressiveness, some kind of super. Yeah. And my brain just like, very heroes. That's good. <laughs> I was just daydreaming. Very heroes. Very hero. And it also combined my desire to make these superheroes very meme-like. Mm -hmm. You know what a meme is? Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to make them really silly, just not actual superheroes, but like uh, more along the lines of like Suicide Squad where there's like the... Uh, the weasel, just like, what the hell is a superhero? Mm -hmm. Just a freaking weasel. It's really funny. Like, I love that, the movie, the second one. Mm -hmm. Is it The Suicide Squad? Yeah, it's The, the Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Have you, no, you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Polka Dot Man. Polka Dot Man. It's, yeah, I was just like, God, I love these superheroes. Like, they're just, I'm, like, I feel like people are getting tired of, like, Superman, Batman, like, these heroes, these traditional heroes, mm -hmm. and... People really like the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Suicide Squad type heroes where they're just kind of funny. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to go down that route. And yeah, just very heroes. It's, there's a meme, there's, you know, Doge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do, oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, much while, <laughs> can somebody else explain this to Marshall? <laughs> I don't know how I could explain that one, huh? Just tell me they're cool. They're cool. Here, let me Groovy. let me show you the meme. They're bitching. Care. Doge is a meme. Yeah, he need, he needs to see it. Yeah, you you have to see it. It's not that funny when you just look at the original meme because it really just turned. It's what it turned into, huh? Yeah, memes get their power through combining memes together. Iteration, the iteration of memes is where uh, they really shine. Slap two memes together. Here, here's a good one, the one on the right. Oh, very common. How insight, many cracking open. God. Damn. Are you getting the idea behind no, it? No, it's like no. a dog speaking. Okay, yeah. It's like uh, I can has cheeseburger, or that kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, okay, I got it. Got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. So, so this is what small children do. A little bit, yeah. Very calm. It's that energy. That it's a young energy. Like dogs are yeah. often... Limited vocabulary. Not a full grasp of grammar, but enthusiasm for what they have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so, so, so yeah, I, that was just an example of it just came very heroes. I combined a bunch of things that were in my mind and 
And you it, were in a relaxed state, not very seeking relaxed. it at the moment. Yeah. Do you remember what Flint Dilly said about luck doesn't happen to the people who aren't working? That is this principle, is that people say, well, ideas come to people that are brilliant ideas. And, and so, the thing is that ideas do pop into creative people's heads all the time. But are they just going to be random things that pop in and then disappear? Or are they going to be things that you say, I want to collect those and I want to prepare myself for them? If you're ready to write it down, record it, make a note that you're in the car and you don't forget it by the time you come back from Disneyland because you're really working on this and you care about it. I got a little revelation while I was drawing. That is a professional way of going about it. Mm -hmm. But there was another thing that I started to segue into and that is, how do you know what you want to do? How do you know what you're meant to do? When you're in your relaxed states, when you're in your daydreaming states, do you write romantic fiction? Do mm. you write action adventure? Do you come up with ideas for how that superhero could have looked even more interesting? Do you imagine gallery displays and how they could be done? The things that we do when we are daydreaming mm -hmm. reveal our archetypes. That's a good point. Nobody's tr making us do this. Yeah. School's out. I'm on summer vacation. Here's where my energy's going to go. Then that's one way to tap into where your energies like to go. Yeah. Good point. Keep going. You want to go through solutions for burnout? Uh, the only solution I know for burnout is to rest. Yeah. That's a big one. You got to refill. Yeah. So, well, not solutions. There, okay. There's a solution to after you've burned out, and there's also just recovery, preventing burnout. Yeah, there's recovery and then prevention as well. Yeah. So balance is a good way to prevent it. Yeah. A solution could be take a break. Um, depending on you know type of break could vary. Like a vacation, you tra you can travel somewhere that could help a lot. That you know that could also inspire you to create get brand new ideas yeah. because you're one you're getting new stimuli yeah. and two you're 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 kind of just letting yourself get more away from the problem by traveling it's a it's and, a culture shift yeah yeah there, there's several reasons why travel is good yeah. i have an analogy for the burnout one about balance what's harder to stand stock still for a half hour or to walk for a half hour. Well, harder physically or, or? Yeah, it's harder to do. Yeah, I guess physically it's harder to stand and still. You, yeah. A person could say, well, that shouldn't be the case because when you're standing there, you're not using any energy and they don't understand you are. that you are using energy. And the issue is that it has to stay constant if you're standing still. Whereas when you kick yourself forward, energy expended, and then relax that part hmm. and use the other muscle, yeah. Then you're going back and forth and so it's easier. And it's the same way with why not just sleep for five days in a row and then work for five days in a row. <laughs> it's better to make the rhythms <laughs> of on and off and on and off yeah. so that they're more natural. Mm -hmm. Well, why not sleep for an hour and then be awake for an hour and a half and then sleep for an hour? I kind of do that. <laughs> You do that? I, I used to take more naps and I, I take naps now sometimes. Okay. Uh, Ethan, Ethan Cohen, when asked about writing, when the Cohen brothers write, they asked about the process and the first thing he said in one of these interviews was, I take a lot of naps. I thought it's true that when you have exerted energy to really come up with ideas that you poured yourself into, you may be tired enough to where you need to recover it, but they're productive enough to where there's nothing wrong with taking naps. It's a part of a natural and personal and unique rhythm that is not a cultural rhythm. Yeah. I'll just go through the other burnout solutions I'm listening. here. Exercise. Yeah. It's obvious. Hang out with creative friends. Yeah. Read a book about something totally different. Mm -hmm. Get a massage. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? I feel like if I was- <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? If, if I was rich, <laughs> that's the only thing that I think I would indulge in regularly. It's like is you don't have anything to show for it is yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't get my- uh, I got the first massage of my life when I was in my 50s. Really? Yeah, and I could not believe how wow. much it meant. Were you just in pain? No. It, it, no? No. And it wasn't the oh, really God. deep, but it was deep enough. And, and uh, there were some times when it got more intense where it, why I was sore for a day or two. 
sauna, you know, I use the sauna and sauna is great. Oh, okay. So you were doing sauna before. I was doing sauna before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's probably, okay. Now I don't do sauna that much because I have to travel. That's a good one. Do sauna is a great yeah. one. Yeah. Th those help with, mm -hmm. you, you go into a world that is so different and then you come back out and it's as if you had a nap. You feel refreshed. And there's another great place to zone out and daydream. It is a great place to zone out. It's like a little trip to the desert for an yeah. hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just sitting there. Just sitting yeah. there. But yeah, you're, you're not going to bring your phone working. in there, hopefully. The, the first few <laughs> weeks of sauna, uh, you can get flu-like symptoms from it because it is unnatural. It's for yeah. sweating. It, it's, it's like a massage too. If you, yeah. You, you can. Yeah. yeah you but it's sick. wonderful. But anyway, okay, anyway. Um, and the last one is take a class. I'm all for that one. <laughs> with Marshall. Oh, I forget. Yeah, with yeah. Marshall. That was the, Did he say that? Yeah. <laughs> take a class with Marshall. Vandruff. I like this guy. Yeah. So, not knowing your motive is the blocker. Not knowing why. Why you're doing things, why you need to solve a problem, whatever. Um, you need to know the why. It, 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 it's like your track when you're going through the storm. It's your railway. Simon Sinek wrote a book called Start With yes. Why. You don't even need to read the book. Just the, the title simple. is enough. <laughs> well, come on. The, should, there's, yeah. Simon he, might watch he, this. He did the speech too, right? There's a video? Yeah, he did yeah, that yeah, speech to do, the employees that. that I like so much. Yeah. This is not unprecedented. The fact that something new and th this more sudden, absolutely. More shocking, absolutely, without a doubt. But this is not unprecedented in the business world. And so for us to say, not how do we do what we're doing, but rather, how will we do what we're doing in a different world? That's true. That's the blue hat. Mm -hmm. The blue hat is to get up over it, see the context, how what I'm doing here fits into the bigger picture of my life. Yeah. It helps you make better decisions in mm -hmm. the future if you do truly know why you're doing something. It does. You know, the example Larry gives is with galleries. Um, you know, you, you paint your painting, you bring it to the gallery, the gallery says, oh, you know, and actually I don't know the exact example he gave, but uh, there's a lot of green in this. Green paintings don't sell very well and... Um, that person has a cigarette in their mouth. That's also, you know, something people don't want to buy very much. And so you say, okay, all right, I'll, I'll do another one that's less green and I'll take away the cigarette. Yeah. And it's like, that could be fine yeah. if your intent is to sell more paintings. Right. Right. If you're motivated by money, totally fine. Yeah. Like you, you want to have a career making images yeah. and selling them. But if your intent, the primary motive is not to make money, but to create paintings that you like and to stay, stay authentic, then you don't do that. Right. It's easier to make the decision in that case to either give in or to say, mm, okay, well, if this one doesn't sell, it's fine. I like it. I'll do another one. Maybe the next one will sell. Right. Because it's too easy to give in to like, okay, the gallery says this and I'll trust them. They know better. It's like knowing where to put in detail in a painting because the compositional study, the thumbnail gives you the big picture of it. Yeah. And when you know your motivation, you know how this decision fits into your bigger goal. So, you, it's easier to make the decision. Yeah. And those aren't the only two options. Like authenticity versus money. Oh, no, no. There, 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 there's a bunch. It could be whether I want it to be happy or sad, whether I want it to be offensive or, <laughs> right. or stroking. Yeah, there's yeah, also, you it, be all famous? sorts of sets of opposites. Yeah. Right. What do you want to be famous? Then, right. Maybe, maybe don't go with that gallery, go with yeah. a, another gallery. Yeah. Or maybe you start making YouTube videos or something. <laughs> or you're going to work gallery. with people you want to work with, even though you won't. I had a student recently had a major crisis of, in, in the animation industry where all of a sudden there's an opportunity to work for a job that's really good money, big studio, real security, not that creative. And another studio, people that he's worked with who they're really good friends, but the money is like half as much money and it's not as secure a company. Mm -hmm. And that was a, that was a crisis. But 
that's where you look at it and get up over it and say, in my life goals, what is it? Yeah. It may that's be. That's the storm, mm -hmm. the crisis. Uh-huh. And, and the why is the track that leads you through the storm, even though, okay. you know, the train can't see anything. Right. It's still on the track. Yeah. A compass is another one, mm -hmm. is that you can't know when the storm is all around you, which way is which, but the compass will remind you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are good. Cool. Those are about big context of my life and my goals and my desires and how making this decision affects it. So, he has a pretty good list of like 13 things where your brain can get, kind of get in the way. Want to read them quickly? Um, but he's, he, these also have very quick solutions. Just they're kind of... They go ahead. Go let, let, let me hear them out of a curiosity. So, like ADD. Okay. And these are things like you think this is a problem. Yeah. And it's like an excuse. Yeah. It's, it, it's, re, it's related to the resistance. Okay. Right. I, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I've got, I've got okay. an interest in this. Okay. So, you're like, oh, but I have ADD. Yeah. And so, it's like, okay, well, make a list or a contract of what you want to accomplish. Write it down on a sticky note. Put it in front of you and work in short, intense spurts. Good. That's like the, uh, the eyes on the horizon thing. Mm -hmm. Some people in the village are meant to be darting from one thing to another because they will, they will keep the community safe. Yeah. ADD is a gift when mm -hmm. it's used properly. Right. Okay. But if you have a, uh, a sticky note or a contract, whatever. It keeps you on track. Keeps you on track. Yeah. You're, you're going down this path and then later on you see it and you're like, oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, Flint Dilly was big on stuff like that. Those templates yeah, he talked templates. about. Yeah, templates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, overworking. For beginner to intermediate painters, too much of a good thing is too much. Too many notes, too much detail. Stay, stay on the bigger idea. Step back. Work in stages. Put the small tools away. Do small studies first. Put a time limit on it. That's really valuable. He has just given one of the most common problems and a quick solutions. Great. Keep going. And over, I think overworking doesn't mean like you're, you're working too much. No, it means you're overworking a piece. The you're, detail, you've yeah, gone yeah. in and micromanaged so much that you kill the spirit that it started with. Yeah. Procrastination. Mm -hmm. Put your studio time on the calendar, mornings or nights, but be consistent. Set a reminder on your phone or computer. Start with short spans of time, 30 minutes to an hour. Just do something. Great. Clutter. Plan time to just organize and clean your space so that the next time you come in, the clutter won't distract you. Okay. Canvas fright. It's like blank page, right? Mm -hmm. Plan simple exercises rather than going for the main event. Just move paint. Mm -hmm. Commit. So, okay, so you have a problem to, of committing. Mm hmm uh, get an accountability partner to create with you to keep you in it. Yeah. Community yeah. and yeah. a punishment or a reward. Right. Yeah. I shouldn't even have to say this. Stay off your technology for one hour each day. I don't know what the problem is. He just kind of gives a <laughs> tip on this one. <laughs> oh, let, uh, let me throw something out in there. Yeah. Uh, this was like the television thing. People say, how does the television thing relate to me now? The research that has shown how people feel worse after social media which we mentioned a few weeks ago, there have been some people in my life who are some really productive people who've been going through terrible feelings and they have locked it down to when I look at stuff on the internet, when I look at everybody else's artwork and when I scroll through, I just feel depleted afterward. And the, the obvious solution to that is do less of that or take it out. How important is it? But yeah. The, I, I think that that is, that's sort of a plague right now, isn't it? The, the connection to social media and being on the electronics is just too much. We do it too much. Yeah. Go out and roll around in the dirt. Look at the moon. <laughs> no, notice the clouds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, not having enough time, delegate, get others to do stuff that interferes with your you time. It will pay for itself. You do that well. Yeah, it's true. Well, not, <laughs> it's true that it works. It's true that it pays for itself. And, it, and that you do it well. <laughs> Come on, take a compliment, man. I'm the best. You are you rocket delegating. <laughs> In fact, you don't even need to deal with this compliment. Have Charlie deal with it. Charlie. 
delegating this to you. Oh, He's delegating uh, you to you to say how good he is at delegating to brag on him. It sounds better for him to have you do it. <laughs> Very oh. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Let's keep going. <laughs> that was horrible. You're fired. Get cheap materials so you're not afraid to waste. Mm -hmm. uh, put the expensive stuff on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. The final layer. I've never heard of that. Yeah, put the expensive stuff on top. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's like those facades in movie studios where there's nothing inside the house, but the house looks beautiful on the outside. Hey, it works for what we're doing. Wouldn't that backfire, though, if you draw on, like, really cheap material? <laughs> yeah. He also suggests to get an RV and go to Moab. Oh, Moab. Yeah. Is I, that Utah? I recommend that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. basically Christian. I don't know what Moab is. M-O-A-B. Yeah, yeah, is that a city in, or something? It's in Utah. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Did you go there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you took your van yeah. to Moab. How do you pronounce that? Moab. Oh, okay. Yeah. Moab. It's an Old Testament term. Did you did you get more creative in Moab? It's really... Uh, have you seen pictures of Moab? No. Oh, wow. Oh, that's Moab. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, of yeah. course. Oh, yeah, of course you, I've you, seen, you, that. You, yes, you seen that. Yes, everybody's seen that. The rocks that yeah, go yeah. like that. Yes, beautiful. Mm, okay. The one with the thing. So, so tell us. How, how did you... How, it's really big. What did that know. lead to as far as being more creative? Uh, I, I mean, the cheesy answer is that it's so big and Moab is so amazing that it makes you feel like the insecurity that you feel is pretty insignificant. Like the Probably night is. skies too. Yeah, hmm. that too. Can't get no satisfaction. Your aesthetic exceeds your ability. Ooh. You can't change that, nor should you. Hmm? It is the thing that drives you forward. That's right. Get used to it. Deal with it. Look at it as a positive. That your aesthetic exceeds your ability. That was good. Because that is a very difficult thing. That's the Ira Glass comment that I, I, they're so far ahead, I can't get there. Yeah, but at least you are wanting to. Yes. Yeah, and people bring that up all the time where like, I'm never satisfied well, I gotta do their voice. I'm never satisfied. In my work. Right? <laughs> That's what they sound like. That's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do their voice then. Can you do a better impression no. of them? Come on. No. Okay, turn off the camera. You gotta okay, say the cameras no. are off. <laughs> what? I'm trying to do a voice. Their voice. Oh, I don't know which voice you're talking about. The criers. About. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you're judging too much, Marshall. Hey, what did I mention last week was a problem that we haven't brought up yet? A problem for people in their training that makes them dissatisfied. The, the pros are so much better than me. How can uh -huh. I ever be a professional artist when I've watched all those artists on YouTube doing demos? Yeah, but we talked about it. Yeah, but we didn't give the solution. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is other than just realizing that they sucked at 1.2. I think that's the first solution is to recognize this is a sped up version. This is a person who spent years yeah. on it and don't compare yourself to that and uh, give yourself permission to take a few years to get to that level. But at least you've got, at least you've got a standard. Yeah. When I was trying to learn draftsmanship from books, it was slow going and it was a few years. And then I see Glenn Vilpoo just, whoo, a leap within the next few months to see somebody who has it in his subconscious enough to do it easily. It made a big difference. So those YouTube videos have to be put in proper perspective. Yeah, you got to be realistic with this. Got to be realistic with it. And sometimes it's a regular reminder because this is emotional mm -hmm. that that block happens of discouragement. That's an emotion. Yeah. So, it's got to be regularly dealt with cognitive behavioral therapy to say two to, two to three Jesus. years from now, how do hard I, work. How do I do this cogni cognitive, cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy, therapy as I understand it? So, next time this happens, I'm like, ah, oh, Marshall told me to do cogni cognitive behavioral therapy. But first, you have to pronounce it correctly. Yes. Yeah. And I can't even do that. <laughs> yeah. and, this doesn't help me. And, and it, what it is to have some affirmations that say two to three years from now, maybe. If you work harder, two years. If you work less hard, maybe four years. And also, do I really want to do that? 
That's the blue hat. That's the why. Mm, I want to do it so that I can say to. I did. Is that good enough? I did it. Or is there really a reason for the things you really want? What's the reason for the thing you want? The reason for the thing I want? Yeah. I feel like the greatest joy of, create, the, of, of creating is the joy of doing it well. And that can be, that can be... Succeeding. Doing it well. Like now, now, whether, even, even when it doesn't make money. No, that's not what I mean by okay, success. But succeeding at this task. Yeah. That I was try, sitting down trying to do something. I was working on that trying to do something and it works. It's a, just a wonderful feeling. And Stephen King said that he never put down a word on, uh, for any of his novels in thinking about money. And he always, he, he, the term he used was always he had for it. the... <laughs> that was, that's another thing though, but let's hang on with that. That's, 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 where, well, that's where I was going with this. He said it was the sheer buzz. He used the word buzz. The buzz and, and Bob Duncan told me that later in his life. He said, I don't have to work anymore at all. I've made enough money to where I can live the rest of my life with her. He said, the, the, I said, what, why do you do it? He said, I'm just interested to see what it is I'm going to write. And that's I'm what, my biggest fan. <laughs> it, there is something in that. It, when you do it well, there is such a feeling like a small child has that says, I love that. So that is it. But if you need money, there can be a guilt trip. I did it well and nobody paid me anything. So which that's the argument for why you have to do it for money sometimes. And doing it for money brings your skill level up so you're more likely if you're pursuing professional standards to be able to do it well. There are some people yeah. who are very happy with their artwork and nobody else likes it. And you know, there's something about that that doesn't appeal to me. It's like you really want to do something you can say, I did a good thing. So yeah, there is. That's, that's the thing I get excited about. David D. Edwards has a whole section in here that we didn't deal with and I want to make, say what it is. Chapter five, it's how to create ideas. It's techniques. Yeah. And this is where he gives the closest to a structure. He gives a five-part structure, define the problem, mm -hmm. that can go awry but do it well, assemble the information, that can be a challenge but do it well, ideate many solutions, that's what this chapter is about, incubate, rest and relax, mm -hmm. that's what I learned in my 20s from that book, and evaluate which idea is best. That's the other part. Now, here's what's interesting to me about the creative process. Those six thinking hats that I keep mentioning. Yeah, you had a whole episode on that. Right. The, the six thinking hats are really useful for the creative process. Define the problem could be the blue hat. Let's see the context and then assemble the information. That could be the white hat. And he mentioned, he did not mention the hats in this book. But one of the things he suggested as a way to make ideas to generate ideas is surprising. It's to organize. It's to logically assess. It's to just state the facts. And sometimes ideas happen when we're trying not to have ideas. You focus on this without opinions and you can't squelch the opinions that come up. So just saying, I'm going to be objective about this, and then you find yourself shifting from white hat into red hat, I just don't like it. Or I wish, and the red hat is the feeling one. So trying to be committed to objectivity can be a way to get your mind on it and then watch how the humanness, the blood in you, the attitude toward it crops up, and then you're on. You're often running with opinions about how it could be better. Okay. And then the, the third one, ideate many solutions. Ideate many solutions is the green hat. And that's the brainstorming thing. And there are some things he left out that I want to address. But the brainstorm, the principle of brainstorming is that more ideas is better than good ideas. At least for that stage. Early stage. Early stage yeah. is many, many ideas, keep the chaos going, keep the craziness going mm -hmm. because at that stage, judging is not the issue. And then after the incubate, rest and relax, then we come back and evaluate which idea is best. So those, those, last, th or those last two, incubate, rest and relax, evaluate which idea is best are not really 
analogous to the hats. Got a little bit of the black hat in there. This one is not good. And the yellow hat, ooh, I really like this. Yeah. This is the best that can happen. But uh, he is big on making lists. When I have a list and I can say, that's not done, that's not done, and it can make me feel guilty in the right ways that I didn't do that, and it can make me feel good that I can check that off on my list. There's a whole movement of bullet journals that are something like that. You just get these things down and then you're, not, you're putting the ducks up and knocking the ducks down. So, we've, we've talked a lot about that first stage, mm -hmm. which is mostly where the creativity comes in, right? But the, then there's those ne the next stage is this one, okay, now you have to identify wh which of these ideas are the good ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to put them into action. You have to actually have a good plan to yeah. execute on that idea. Yeah. That's where the black hat of negativity is the most valuable. And it should come in late. And, and we've talked about how it's, it's, it's a dangerous hat because all it is is critical. It's so easy to shoot things down. But to indulge that on our own work at the last stage, no, 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 didn't make the grade, didn't make the grade. Bob Mankoff as a cartoon editor when the New Yorker cartoons were doing so well under his regime, he was the guy who just said no, 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 no. They even did a video of him saying no to everything. No, nah, no, uh, overdrawn, underdrawn, drawn just right, still not funny enough. And uh, that's the part that is the governor that says, great that you got all these ideas. Mm -hmm. Very few of them are going to be the ones that are going to turn into, blossom right. into a flower. Turn so, you start by saying yes to everything. That's right. Then you move on to saying no to everything except one thing. <laughs> let's, say, let's, let's get this back into order. You start by defining the problem. You start by okay, getting yeah. context right. and then assembling information, but then generating, generating, generating. Now, there's a couple other things I want to say about generating ideas. Let me, let me uh, tell you that he has exercises in here where you use verbs to plus your idea. Let me give, uh, let me give you an example as a check, checklist. He calls them manipulative verbs. Compare, reverse, freeze, question expand, illuminate. Okay. An, op an obvious one is whatever idea you've got, what's the opposite of that? Okay. Uh, the opposite it, of an idea. Yeah. Edward de Bono had that suggestion that when, an in when you have an inclination to go a direction, ask what's the opposite of that and give it, a, give it a, uh, some, some attention because everybody goes the ob obvious direction. And some people are going to say, what if you went the other direction? And that's where the fundamental principles of some great principles of art, irony and understatement, yeah, okay. dry humor. So, okay. add more green to the painting and add another cigarette into their mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> put, put the cigarettes in the ears. And that's where a good deal of unique style comes from is that you <laughs> overdid it. Yeah. You think I overdid it there? Watch me overdo it now. <laughs> what do you think about this one? Yeah. And then look to the other side. To say, how can I balance this out? I add a green a, cigarette into their mouth. Here's a couple of, yes. Here, <laughs> Which here's a couple of these. Uh, <laughs> rearrange, combine. Very dank. Yeah. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> no, the very dank. I don't get that. <laughs> oh, very, very dank? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Man, do you get it? No. Okay. It's a big, well, it's an allusion to earlier very car. Very I don't dank. think so. Well, it's that and the... Uh, oh, so you we... did use very... Yeah. Oh, really? There were two things. That oh, wow. He just did it. Wow, He Charlie. did the manipulative verb of combine. Uh-huh. There's rearrange, there's magnify, there's minify, there's substitute. But I have two favorites. Mm. One is, what is this like? And there's a famous example of if you have gold, you can figure out the volume of the gold if it's a gold brick. But what if it's a chandelier with a whole bunch of facets to it, a whole bunch of complex things? You'd have to melt it down to find out the volume. Do you know about this? I don't know the scientist that did it. It combines two things. He took a bath. And so he was relaxed. But he also noticed that when he got into the bathtub. Oh, the volume The up. water was a certain level right. and, and it went up and it went down. That's it. Dip the chandelier into water and then you will know what the exact volume is. Now, that was an analogy. 
that was an insight that came fr from saying this one is like this one. That is a rich resource of ideating and the green hat is a wonderful place to ask what other thing is this like that you can make comparisons. And then the opposite or the other one is uh, to contrast. What are some opposites of this? Not just one opposite of this, but what are a series of opposites of this? Mm -hmm. And then you get the, the innovations that happen from a person mm -hmm. who is willing to chase the other side. I'll give one example of that. There is a documentary called Fast, Cheap, and Out of Control. I used to show it to my storytelling students my, uh, that are studying film because it's a masterpiece of editing. And it's a spotlight on four craftspeople. A lion tamer, a topiary gardener, an expert on the naked mole rat, and a robotics designer designing robotics, uh, robotic animals. Well, this guy who innovated these robotic animals that could go onto the surface of the moon or any, any planet and they can move over any unpredictable terrain is that while he was working on it, he realized that most robots are designed to keep from falling over. What if you designed a robot that just falls over and falls over and falls over and falls over all at once? And so he designed these robots that are made to fall over and yet keep going. Like walking. Yeah. And they tumble and, and they're efficient and they move rapidly over unpredictable terrain. So there is an example of a creative scientist who at some point when he said, what's everybody doing? What if you just pursued it the opposite way? There are many stories like that within creative breakthroughs. Uh, so those are two of my favorite questions to ask in the green hat stage. What can I liken this to? And what is different enough from this to where you could actually set it up yeah. as a contrast, as an opposite, as a balance? Interesting. Okay. Those are the last things I think I have to say. That's a good one. Like if you, if you see everybody headed in the direction... That's a good opportunity to ask what's the opposite. Yeah. Now, where do we go from this? Because this is our last episode. Yeah, I feel like we need to say bye in some special way, but I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we just say hello. Because it's the opposite of what you'd normally yeah. do. It could be. Did you notice? <laughs> did you did you notice how when it doesn't we, always work, huh? When yes, it does. No, no, no it doesn't. <laughs> but it does in this case. Did you notice when we announced that we were ending Draftsman uh -huh. four, three, four weeks ago? Yeah. How many people in the comments said, "I just tuned in. I just discovered it last month." This is right. my first episode. Because the people that started listening a while ago aren't listening anymore. Right. The only people that are listening still are the ones that just started recently. For that, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your point? I think that there are going to be people who tune into this for the first time. To this episode? <laughs> yeah. This is going to be their dream. So, they're going to go back. Welcome. Thanks for joining. There are people, obviously, yeah. that this is their first episode. Yeah. Just this is the introduction. I came in on the last episode yeah. and I got to go back. Oh, man. Now, the, <laughs> if there are people, if you have been around since the first season, you Ooh. are truly involved. I can't imagine, but I know there are some and I'm thankful for them. Yeah. And so, my feeling is that I'm hoping not to go away. It's just from the Draftsman podcast, but I'm going to be working on product and I am still going to be trying to once a week do something for the public. So, if you're, if you go to martialart.com and get on my subscription list, it's up there in the corner that says subscribe and make sure you respond to the confirmation email. You'll know what I'm doing. I'm also going to be posting the Bridgman boot camp that we did in 2020 starting in January for free. We're going to take those recordings that we did that summer, 12 of them, and put them on there for free. So, you've got 18 hours of me teaching from Bridgman. And there's, there's more to come. This doesn't have to be the end of it. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Marshall Vandro. It is, isn't it? <laughs> are you sponsoring anything? Anything you want to say in goodbye? Or are you just so in front of the public so much that it doesn't make any difference to you? This is my, this is my exit from- This is your last the, opportunity. It's my exit yourself. from the public arena. I, I am <laughs> going to go into a smaller arena uh, where if our 10,000 people a week come down to 100 or a few hundred. I'm really happy with that. When are you going to do your book reviews? Well, we'll see. But I'm, I'm, I've got an idea that there are some other people who want to do book reviews too. And I'm figuring if I had one book a month and three other people who wanted to do book reviews 
once a month. That would mean every week we could meet on a Friday or whatever. So you're serious. You're doing book reviews. Well, I'm not doing it right away. And I'm taking a survey. Hey, there's another thing. There's a survey. There will be a link on my website to survey that if you say, I really want this from you, we will pay attention to that. But make it cheap enough so that it's affordable and make the themes change every month. That will be me trying to get my 100 true fans or or three or 400 true fans to pay some bills and share the work with colleagues too. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. Teaming up with some concept artists. I'm talking with some of my friends who are such good concept artists. Who would you be willing to for one month, four times, get together, you demo, and I'll answer questions and, and teach. So I'm excited about the next stage and I think that it will be less, less uh, anxiety producing than to go onto YouTube with you, as grateful as I am for this opportunity. Wow, Thank thanks. you, Stan. Oh, oh, I guess you're welcome. I guess. <laughs> was, that a, was that a lousy compliment? Or a lousy uh, thank you. Sounded like it. Should I take it further? I don't know. I'm or scared. Or balance it out. I don't. I'm a little scared. Yeah, I am too because it was going to be really complimentary, and I'm feeling like it would be oh, too, go ahead, too embarrassing. Keep first, going. you say something first. <laughs> what are you saying goodbye? How are you saying goodbye to everybody? Uh well, I guess if we're sponsoring episodes, mm -hmm. I haven't updated my personal website in like. 17 years no it's been less but it's a long time and it'll be updated soon so if you do want to follow me <laughs> <laughs> this is smooth i will have You're a good at this. website <laughs> you are better than me huh you are better than me <laughs> what are you talking about you're doing a great job at pitching proco not Proco, stanprocopanko.com. Oh, stanprocopanko. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah my personal website. I wasn't paying attention. I am so. revamping it. And I don't know if I'll have my own. I mentioned that I might do my own podcast. Right. I don't know if I will. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. If I do, it might be on stanprocopanko.com. Mm -hmm. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But maybe you should check. Yeah. At some point, if it's there. Maybe. <laughs> and maybe it'll be good. Yeah. It might not be. <laughs> <laughs> That's a creative attitude. You go in saying it's okay to fit. It, I don't care if it's good. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Wait a minute. It's a lot of maybes there. Yeah. Maybe it should be called maybe. Maybe. Hey, you mm, see that? Very maybe. Very maybe. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> that is such a good title. Very maybe. <laughs> oh. History has changed and it ha isn't that amazing? We hope this would be a good episode and the whole pivotal wow. thing for Stan's personal future <laughs> happened. In now the I last feel like I have minute. to use that. Yeah, you got to use it. But I already have a thing a Bunch of superheroes called very heroes. I have to just go with that. Well, why not just everything? everything is very this until it gets old and then and then change it to another adjective like almost. Almost maybe? Yeah, or almost car or keep going. So, yeah. Keep going. Let wait. We're we're brainstorming. Yeah, we're brainstorming, aren't Let's we? Let's not stop. So well, there's very and there's extreme. Now they've already used extreme a lot, but extreme yeah. is a good one. There is super, and that's been used a lot. Let's go on the other side of that. Almost and not quite. N not maybe. Yeah, not quite maybe. Not quite maybe. Uh, uh, hinting at maybe, sort of maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe non maybe. Maybe maybe. Double maybe. Maybe maybe. Yeah, double maybe. <laughs> Should we keep going or should we keep our brainstorming keep sessions to ourselves? No, th let's keep going. Here's where I'd go to a thesaurus. Here's where I'd go to a dictionary and look for the antonym. Okay. Very antonym. <laughs> uh, very anything just sounds funny. Yeah. Slightly. Exact maybe. Actual <laughs> maybe. Precise maybe. Overly maybe. <laughs> Extra. Pure maybe, Extra simple maybe. maybe, sheer maybe. Extra maybe. Dead maybe. All that maybe. Intensely maybe. <laughs> Mucho maybe. <laughs> Muy maybe. <laughs> Muy. Certainly maybe. Definitely maybe. Well, the opposite. Surely maybe. The opposite. Maybe is doubtful. Also, 
I'm hungry. <laughs> Perhaps, maybe. Eternally, maybe. Eternally, maybe. That's like eternal doubt. It's limbo forever. Let's instead of maybe, let's just go to limbo. How low can you go? I can't get the black hat off my head right now. Hunger is kicking in, and so the physicality of wanting Everything to eat. Everything is a no. Yeah. <laughs> Anything uh, else? Maybe. Very maybe. Very maybe. This is our last chance. Yeah, I know. So, when someone's saying bye, mm -hmm. what do you want them to do? Be quick about it. <laughs> Come on. Be quick about it. Hard cut. <laughs> yeah, hard cut. <laughs> Yeah, we did it! Oh, Woo! Yeah! Oh! <laughs>